Games Workshop's Kill a Can models have a lot of character. You can pose them in a lot of different ways and uh, have a lot of fun with how you do them. You can make them run and so on, but I'm focusing on the arms. And what I want is a motion like this. This is just plastic on plastic. A lot of people will glue this in and just leave it in place. I like to play with my models a bit more and have more posing variety for pictures and other purposes. So one of the first things I do is I have to make sure that all my magnets have the same facing. This is a Grey Knight, Grey Knight's Dreadnought arm. So I want it to be able to snap on to a killer can if need be. Hopefully never the other way around because it's a little heretical. And then the first step that people will go to, it's pretty easy, is to just go with a disc magnet to a disc magnet. And these are the D41s from KNJ Magnetics. So it just clips on. This is fine, except I don't have that wide mobility that I want from the ball and so socket joint. So this will go 360 degrees like this, but I, I want something a little bit more. It is, and it's almost flush, the D41 in here. So my next step was a ball on the disc, a ball magnet on the disc. And these are the S. The S4 magnets from K and J Magnetics, so they're sphere. So just as a test, gravity pulls this down, so it doesn't really have support. Of course, I want to just leave it like this exposed. But I tested this with a magnet on the inside, and it just wasn't enough. Uh, gravity kept pulling it. Fortunately, I next tested. A disc magnet on it because I thought, well, let me just drill out the shoulder socket and put in a disc. The disc magnet is not going to work, which I think you're going to see because it actually can't move anywhere on the magnet. The sphere magnets still have polarity, and I actually just detached it from the force of the, the two magnets. So I next moved on to uh, steel bearings. I ordered these from VXB Bearings in Southern California, and I got a hundred of them for three dollars and thirty-three cents. So these are also a, a quarter of an inch diameter, just like the socket is, and and like the S4 magnets from K and J Magnetics. So these will go right into the shoulder socket, and here's one. So this ended up working, but what I did is I added an additional magnet on the inside and that's a D21. So this is a little D21. If I pop, I think he'll actually open. I pop him open. On the inside is a fat D D42, a larger disc magnet. And here is uh, not, well, some super glue, but also a whole bunch of hot glue keeping it in place. These actually have an attraction between them right now. So this keeps it in place. And now I have that full movement that I want. And it's going to be blocked by the shoulder pad up here, which is also going to hide the joint. As long as I move it slowly, it's not going to snap off. So I can move this however, pose it however I want. And gravity is not strong enough to, to pull it down. So pretty much anything I want. And then just a couple more things. In order to get these magnets out, I'm going to use nail polish remover with acetone to help weaken the bond that's in there. I'll probably actually have to drill it out from the inside to, to give it a little nudge or push. So those disc magnets are in there firmly. So maybe you can benefit from my trial and errors, and I'll be posting my cans when they're painted and completed.